So it's lovely to have you here, whether you're watching live or whether you're going to watch later. Uh, my name is Kim Knight and I'd love to welcome you to this webinar, The Emotional Causation of Physical Illness. And if you're on the live web webinar, please do type in any questions at all at any time. And at certain points, I will come to those questions. I'm just going to briefly introduce myself because for a lot of people watching this webinar, they may never have heard of me. I'm not some well-known person like Dr. Oz. Uh, so I just want to share my story of how I come to know what I've learned and what I'm now sharing with other people. And then the main topic of the webinar today is the emotional causation of physical illness. I'm going to give some case studies of people who've healed from chronic illness uh, just through healing the emotional traumas and stresses that created them at a fundamental level and then give some information for further information and learning if you're interested. First of all, I would love to know if you're on the live call, what do you want to know? So if there's anything that in particular that you want to know on this call, please type it in the chat and then I will incorporate that into the webinar. So my first question to you is, is illness a mistake or is it random? Uh, sorry, is illness a mistake or random or is it intelligent and correct? So in other words, has the body made a mistake or is it actually doing exactly what it needs to do? So if you're on the live call, love you to type in your thoughts on that one. Uh, because understanding that is, is absolutely critical to understanding what I call the bigger picture of illness. And another question I have is, is it possible that every cell, tissue and organ in your body has a metaphysical, which means beyond physical, Meta means beyond. Does it have, do they have a metaphysical function as well as a physical function? Now, this was something that I never knew when I was young growing up in, in England. Uh, I didn't know any of this, and it took me getting very sick and having to go through on a very, very long journey to get well to discover this information. We have a physical body, we have a mind, which is the mental part of us. We have our emotions, which are our feelings, and we have the spiritual part of us, which is to do with, you know, connection to God, divine self, true self. Look, people have all sorts of different names, you know, it can get very tricky when we start getting into, you know, topics of religion, etc. We don't need to do that. But essentially, we can say we have four core aspects to ourself. And so... We need to take this into account uh, in healing and in health. So before I go on and get into the meat of the webinar, I just want to share a little bit about myself so that you understand where I'm coming from, what my learning is, and how I'm so passionate about teaching and sharing what I teach and share. So I had a very unexpected journey. I, this, I did not plan to be doing what I'm doing now. I was happily having a career in film production and that was my dream career. But it was cut short in my 30s when I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and I literally walked into work one day and quit on the spot because I just couldn't go on. The fatigue had been building up for, for months and I just walked into work and quit. And for the next 10 years, I was unable to work. And that set me on a very, very long journey of exploration where I tried over 200 therapies. And then I ended up training professionally in, in some of them because I was just trying to get myself well. So I had no intention of being a therapist. I just wanted to get myself well. And because I dived so deep into some of these therapies, I ended up being a prof you know professionally uh, credited in some of these therapies and then I started to help other people. So I healed myself without medication, without supplements from multiple chronic conditions. And in my 20s, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. So that was before the chronic fatigue. And I ended up in hospital. Uh, it was pretty dire. And, but I knew I was put on medication in, in the hospital and it made me feel 10 times worse and I took myself off it, which luckily I was able to do because I'd self-admitted myself into the hospital. 
and I thought there's got to be another way. Something inside of me just said there's got to be another way. But I can tell you, uh, as you can see this slide here, uh, you know, it was not a straight line journey. Uh, it was lots of hills and valleys and mountains and up and down and at times feeling like I would never get there. And in fact, after five years of being unwell with chronic fatigue and literally being virtually housebound, uh, unable to go out, unable to drive my car, unable to do the shopping, I was lying in bed one day and I thought, you know, I, I just have this feeling that maybe I'm never going to get better. And this is very common for people with really chronic illnesses that have been going on for years. You know, you do start to think maybe I'm never going to get better. And I sold my house, a uh, very radical decision, which I now regret, but any, in some ways, but I sold my house and I decided that I was just going to travel around the world, even though I felt absolutely horrendously ill, I was just going to do it because otherwise I might never be able to do it and I would die. Uh, and so I sold my house, I traveled around the world, I was still searching for answers, trying lots of therapies, and right at the end of that search, uh, that trip, I found the answers. And a big chunk of the answer was what I was doing with my emotions. So the type of clients that I now work with are people who have seemingly inexplicable symptoms. They've had tests which come up negative, but they've got horrendous symptoms. Uh, they've been diagnosed with some chronic pain or chronic fatigue condition, maybe a digestive disorder, depression, uh, but chronic long-term health conditions which don't seem to be responding to traditional routes, whether it's um, normal uh, conventional medicine or even acupuncture, naturopathy, uh, natural therapies. They're just not finding the answer. And the missing piece is often the emotional side of things as it was for me and I'll share uh, what that you know how that came about for me to discover that I'll share that later must remember to tell that because I don't have a slide for that to remind me <laughs> mainly I have these slides to so I remember what to say but also obviously to give you some visuals so I've worked with many people of all ages the youngest 16 the oldest 88 and in general the average recovery time without any medication or supplements or external um, intervention, i.e. just changing something from the inside, uh, is usually three to six months. So I started in 2006, and then I started going uh, to phone consultations in 2009, not because I wanted to, but because uh, people with these chronic health conditions, they're too ill to travel. And a lovely lady who lived three hours away kept on phoning me and saying, please, please, please do it over the phone. And so I, I took a punt and did it and found that, wow, this works equally well, because of course, we're just working with the mind and the emotions. So we don't have to be physically in the same room. And then I started delving into online webinars in 2011 and then developing online self-help programs in 2015. And now 100% of my business is online. So I'm just sharing this just to give you a picture of who I am, what I do. Um, I think it's really important to, if we've never met somebody, to, to know a little bit about them. So what I love doing is I love teaching people about the incredible self-healing powers of their body and mind and how ultimately their body is a self-healing machine. And we just get in the way of, of that happening. I love showing them how they can take, or we can take much greater responsibility for our health than we ever imagined or may have been told. Because when I grew up, and I don't know what it was like for you, but when I grew up, all I knew was you go to the doctor, you either get given a medication or you go and have surgery. That was really all that I knew. I also was never told that you ask, you know, is there a reason for the symptoms being here? There was never ever any questioning back then. I mean, things have changed a lot. And, they, and as I'm going to be talking about, that, you know, they're changing um, much at a, at a huge rate right now. Um, but... For me, it was about you just go to the doctor, you don't ask why you're ill, uh, you just accept it as normal almost, and actually nothing could be further than the truth. Actually, what I've discovered is that our natural state of health is to be very, very healthy, to be very, very happy, and that illness is not a natural state. So I love giving people the tools to manage their health and prevent illness, 
and to and also part of a group of people who are really at the forefront of cutting edge of changes in healthcare today, uh, ushering in what I call a new and sustainable paradigm of healthcare. And ultimately, I love teaching people to become their own master, which means the master of their physical body, their mind, their emotions. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, I'm my biggest guinea pig, and it has been hugely challenging to do this um, because we have to make a lot of internal changes to to to, to master ourselves. So training, just briefly, I've trained in lots of different. Um, therapies which are right now not very well known but very much focusing on the emotional causation of physical illness and then I've developed my own method which at the moment I'm just calling the night method it will probably have a new name in the future but really what it's about is it's lifestyle medicine looking at how people live their life today and how that creates stress uh, and symptoms uh, so therefore looking at stress reduction and stress what I call stress eradication So it's going further than just reduction uh, And emotional management and mindfulness. So that's a huge part of what I do and also emotional and trauma healing Which is also uh, a big part and then I've developed my own protocol called the Kiwi Health Detective Protocol Which is a root cause analysis? Uh, foundation session where in 90 minutes we identify the emotional stress, trauma, root causes of illness. So that is that is what I do. Uh, I, I speak on lots of summits, sharing this information, love speaking on summits. Uh, and uh, I've created a couple of online summits myself. One was the Chronic Fatigue Fibromyalgia Summit. One was an, an Emotional Intelligence Summit. And I've also been um, awarded a couple of awards which and nominated, which has been amazing. And I love to speak at medical conferences. So that's, that's about me. I hope that gives you a little bit of a, um, a background. So as I said at the beginning, is illness a mistake or random, or is it intelligent and correct? And <clears throat> what, I've, uh, what I mentioned earlier is that, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last five years, it's like the whole world seems to be shaken up through technology and through lots and lots of changes that are going on. So, for example, at the moment, most people are unaware how much digital currency is, is changing things and will change things in the future. Um, there's just so much what is being referred to as disruption. But a lot of people are not aware of the disruption that is going on in the health industry. Now, I know that in the last, I don't know how many years, I'm not quite sure when it started, and maybe you know, um, if you're a functional medicine practitioner, but it seems to me I started noticing functional medicine coming onto the scene a couple of years ago, and that is a huge disruptor. But there is even more disruption that is going on in the healthcare industry beyond functional medicine, and that's that's where I've been working at for the last 10, 15 years actually, but it's still not that well known comparatively or relatively to most people, to, to the public, even to many health professionals. So I want to share some of what what some of the world's you know current healthcare models. Um, now we have just get my little annotate spotlight. So we have conventional medicine, which is what I call you know the the doctor, uh, where in general symptoms are seen as random and a mistake, or maybe they're due to some stress. And the solution, as I said, is usually medication, surgery, lifestyle changes. And it's what I call a physical surface level um, addressing of the problem. And then we have Chinese medicine, which, you know, 30 years ago was not accepted much at all. And now it's pretty much accepted in our system. You know, acupuncture is very well accepted in most Western countries. And, and they see symptoms as due to either a blocked or depleted or excess energy which is called qi, and I've done a lot of study of Chinese medicine and qigong. Uh, so um, interestingly enough, mainly it's depletion of qi rather than excess qi, but so either it's blocked or depleted qi, and so the solution is to unblock and reroute the energy to increase or decrease it as necessary. And so that's working at an energetic fundamental level. 
So then there's the Indian system though, known as Ayurveda, which is the science of life, uh, where symptoms are really seen as a buildup of toxins. I've done a little bit of study in Ayurveda, not much, but just a little bit of foundation study. And their main approach is herbs and uh, detoxification. And again, they're addressing an energetic fundamental level, also physical. Then there's functional medicine, um, where, uh, and you can probably tell me better than this if you're a functional medicine practitioner, but as far as I understand it, functional medicine is due to an unhealthy lifestyle. And sorry, that dosha imbalance should have been up here under Ayurveda, I put that in the wrong column. And as far as I understand it, the main um, solution is supplements, maybe some lifestyle changes. And so we're really dealing here, again, at mainly a physical level. And then we have more recently lifestyle medicine, green prescriptions, where symptoms are seen, you know, due to unhealthy lifestyle. So you're not exercising right, you're not eating right. So the solution is to eat healthier and exercise better. So those, it's mainly the nutrition and the exercise which are uh, addressed, uh, which then starts to move into behavioral, physical, mind, emotions level of a person's being. But this is where I'm working and have been working for the last, well, how long have I been working? 11 years. Um, I mean, studying altogether for 25 years but and working on myself, but as a practitioner for 11 years. So what this is, is symptoms are due to everything that has ever happened and is currently happening in a person's life. I mean, everything. So they're due to the traumas, the stresses, the life events, the beliefs, the behaviors, the emotions, epigenetics, our spiritual side of us, which I sort of call life purpose. Uh, so we could call that, you know, the model is root cause analysis plus lifestyle me medicine plus mind medicine plus emotional medicine plus energy medicine. Um, it's everything. And the solution is to work out the real root causes at a psychosocio environmental stress, mind beliefs, behavioral lifestyle level. And what I found we need to do is we need to heal the past and we need to heal the present. We need to address the present. Uh, both are necessary. So this is total holistic healing on all levels. So we're taking into account the physical body, the mind, the emotions, the spirit, energy, everything. It's a totally holistic model. So if you want to know more about these different levels of healthcare, I do have a program which I'll share a bit more about later but it's called which healthcare model is right for me. And it goes into much more detail in this evolution of healthcare and this disruption of healthcare that is happening at the moment. So I wanna share a few key learnings that I've learned along the way uh, from my, for myself and from clients uh, about you know, some key factors that we need to look at in terms of understanding uh, illness. And one of the first things that I've really learned is that symptoms are intelligent communication from the body which require interpreting by the head, right? They're not random. Uh, they're actually intelligent. They're not a mistake. They have meaning. They have purpose. And we have to work out what that meaning and purpose is. And that's why I call myself the Kiwi Health Detective because without even realizing what was happening over this period of 11 years of seeing hundreds of clients who are chronically ill, and I'm sure you can relate to this as a medical practitioner, is that you start to see common themes, common recurring patterns. And so, you know, this is the, one of the things that I've learned is that, that actually symptoms are intelligent communication and that we have to learn how to interpret them and understand them, which of course I was never told or brought up to think about. The second thing is, Physical illness and symptoms are often not caused by anything physical. Now, this is a this is a radical um, move away from our old paradigm of you know just going to to get a medication which takes away a pain or suppresses a pain or suppresses a symptom. Um, just dealing with things at a chemical, chemistry, physical, surgery, whatever level. This is one of the main reasons why when people have symptoms that are either they're showing up, that the tests are showing up negative or, or you know, the doctor or the therapist just can't find a reason, they're just continually looking uh, for something physical and they're looking in the wrong direction. 
basically. So I'll give you a great example. This is probably my first year of practice, actually. I, I had a client come who was about 74, and she had had chronic um, intestinal pain for three months. Actually, no, it was longer than that, but she'd actually been in hospital for three months. And in that three-month period, they had done every test they could possibly do <laughs> um, to, to locate the physical cause of the problem. So three months she was in hospital and she was in agony, just agony in her, in her abdomen. On our second session, uh, what came to light was that she, her mother had died when she, um, you know, some years before and she had never said goodbye to her mother. She, her mother was in hospital. She went home overnight. She came back the next day and her mother had died while she'd been away. So she'd never had the opportunity to say goodbye. And she was, so she's 74, right? So imagine what generation she's from. And she'd been taught, you, you don't feel your feelings. You, you, you don't express your feelings. You don't show your feelings. You just hold it all inside, which is what most people actually, even in our day and age now, are doing. Um, so she suppressed this sadness and this grief. And the thing is, uh, as, as we know, as you probably heard, is that according to quantum physics, everything is energy. So if you t whether it's our, our mind or our emotions or our spirit or our physical body, if you take a cell and you put it under a microscope and you magnify it a million times, it will no longer look like physical matter. So this is quantum mechanics, quantum phys physics. And, and it will actually be 99% space, which is crazy, right? Because we seem so solid. But our thoughts are a form of energy. Our emotions are a form of energy. Our physical body is actually energy. And obviously our spiritual part of ourselves is energy. So we are an energy being. And the law of physics is that once energy is generated, it can't be destroyed. And this is true for emotions. Once they're generated inside the body, which they will be spontaneously, and I go much more into depth in, in, in other trainings, not the place for this, but describing the difference between uh, different types of emotions and which ones are generated in the body and which ones are generated in the mind. It's, it's quite complex, but just to make it simple, once emotions are generated, uh, because they're a form of energy and energy cannot be destroyed, they get stored in the body. So energy can actually be transformed. So ice can turn, uh, sorry, water can turn into ice or steam, but it can't be destroyed. So it has to go somewhere and the body intelligently stores it until we're ready to deal with it. And if we don't deal with it, it will build up, and I'm gonna show that later, that will build up into symptoms. So she had stored this sadness inside of her and on the second session together, she she got in touch with this emotion. The, the memory came to light, which allowed her to get in touch with the emotion, and she released it, and the pain went in seconds. So this is how quickly symptoms can dissolve if we get to the core of them, if we, if we just tap in and touch that root cause. I'm not saying they all disappear that quickly, but sometimes they can, and I've had my own experiences of that as well. So, uh, so as I've already alluded to, suppressing emotions creates disease, and disease is just a state of dis-ease. And emotions can create severe, debilitating physical pain and fatigue. And I know because I'm working with people all the time who when they come in the door, their, their, their symptom levels are seven, eight, nine out of 10 for fatigue and pain and, and whatever. And by the time they go out the door, those symptoms are down to you know zero, one, two, three, depending on how long we work together. Uh, if we work together long enough, they'll get down to zero. So I know this is true. And what I've also found which nobody ever told me, I just observed it through taking case history after case history after case history, is that most chronic illness is set up by the age of seven. It's all the patterning, the conditioning, the unconscious beliefs, the unconscious behavioral patterning, which is set up as a result of what is going on in our environment before the age of seven, and later on, it starts showing up as illness later down the track. 
So as I mentioned, there are these four aspects to our being. And I've also mentioned quantum physics. And um, I highly recommend there's a film. It came out some time ago, but it's still good to watch if, if you're new to this. Uh, what the bleep do we know? And Bruce Lipton talks a lot about this um, PhD um, um, researcher on, on the biology of belief and his other books and epigenetics and how epigenetics has superseded genetics. And I'm sure you're probably familiar with epigenetics and how our environment it turns on or it's our response to what is happening in our environment, which, which um, turns on or turns off genes. So it's not just this hereditary thing of like, well, it's in my genes. No, it's much more than that. Actually, what he discovered, uh, and it's quite well known now, is that genes are expressed as a result of the emotional response that is going on inside our body to what is happening in our life and in our environment. So if you haven't read his book yet, highly recommend checking that out. And I uh, actually saw Bruce a few months ago. He actually lives part-time in New Zealand and lives quite close to me. Now, another fantastic uh, researcher who, who passed over a few years ago, a lovely, lovely lady, uh, is uh, Candice Pert. And she did a lot of research into how um, emotions change our chemistry at a molecular level, chemical level, cell level, <laughs> uh, quantum level. Um, it's a great resource as well for understanding how emotions change our physical body and impact our physical body. And, you know, if you think about it, if you think of how you feel when you feel good, when you feel happy, when you feel joyful, uh, you know, all the good stuff that we want to feel, if you close your eyes, if you're not used to tapping into feelings, you can feel what that feels like inside your body, right? It feels uplifting. It feels light. There's a sense of relief. And literally, you can feel what, what you're really feeling when you're feeling emotionally is you're feeling the changes in body chemistry, right? You're feeling the, the changes in hormones and hormonal secretions and chemical secretions inside your body. And that's obviously, you know, in the endocrine system, uh, that's what we're feeling. We're literally, it's, it's not just, a, emotions are not just a feeling as in some, I don't know, airy-fairy thing they're a chemical change inside the body. So if that chemical change is happening and there's more serotonin, for example, uh, then you know we're gonna feel better, right? And when we say, for example, feel angry, that switches on different hormones, different secretions, different chemicals. It changes the chemistry in our body. And actually, anger is one of the most toxic emotions, which is why anger is, is to do with the liver. So Chinese medicine has a fantastic um, model for understanding the different, uh, the different emotions that affect the different organs. And I go into great depth in my Smile Your Way to Inner Peace program because I did a meditation for seven years every day clearing emotional energy from my body because I had to. I had so much emotional backlog and that was what was creating the chronic fatigue. So I had to go in and literally excavate out all this yucky energy, all the sadness, all the grief, the disappointment, the hurt, the fear, the anger, the shame, the guilt. Had to go in and excavate that out, literally out of different organs. And then what happens, just like when the, the, the clouds part uh, and you see the blue sky and the shiny sun, which was always there, but the clouds were covering it. So we clear away this negative energy and then all the positive stuff, all the joy, the happiness, the love, all the good stuff that we want, it's all already there. And most people don't realize that. And I didn't even realize that. I'd been learning that, that particular technique for a few years before I even realized it. So now I, I tell people up front, uh, it can be quite a revelation to realize that actually all the joy and happiness that you've been searching for it's already inside of you, and if you're not experiencing it, it's because there's a whole lot of crap that's covering it. There's anger, there's resentment, frustration, fear. This is why we have to learn how to process emotional energy, and we can do this. It takes 
time, takes effort, takes commitment, but we can do it. So I just want to briefly mention uh, the three brains. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but science has proven that we now have three brains. One in the head, one in the heart, one in the gut. Now, the definition of a brain is a network of neurons with intelligent purpose. And that is exactly what these three brains are. Now, the Chinese have known this for thousands of years. They're called Dantians. Uh, and it's only really now that science is catching up and saying, hey, we've discovered something new, when actually they're just rediscovering what was already known by the Chinese. But nevertheless, it's fascinating information because in order to stay healthy, I've discovered that people know, need to know how to use their three brains. Uh, and I go, I go into more detail. Not, I don't have the time to go into the detail of all the nine core functions of the three brains. I have other videos on YouTube. I have online trainings for that. But we have to know the three. We have to get in touch with these three brains and not just use the head brain. And unfortunately, in our Western society, people are only really trained to use the head brain, which is for analyzing, thinking, cognizing, recognizing recognizing etc um, but our heart brain and our gut brains are very much to do with uh, feeding back to us uh, whether things are okay in our world and and looking after safety because one of the things that we tend to forget and I forgot to put a slide in for this um, one of the things that we tend to forget is that if if we're not safe and we may be in danger we may die so our body is constantly evaluating, do I feel safe in my world? Um, you know, am I safe? And it's evaluating that at a physical level, am I safe physically? But it is also evaluating it, am I safe emotionally? And this has been a big missing part. So we have these three brains. And we also have, and I'm going to show how this interrelates with what I'm just about to share. We also have three ways our body communicates to us. So our body has needs. So if you think about a car, right, your, your car needs petrol, it needs water, it needs servicing, maybe it needs cleaning. <laughs> um, you know, it has needs. And if you don't attend to those needs, then it's going to break down, right? If you don't put petrol in, if you don't put water in, if you don't service it, if you don't replace the spare parts, I mean replace parts, you know, when they wear out, it is going to break down. Now, it's the same thing with our body. Our body has needs. And unfortunately, most people are not educated in what those needs are. It's like we're not given the user manual, right? Uh, and so people go around just abusing, basically unconsciously abusing their body. Now, some of the reasons for that abuse will be because of these unconscious beliefs and behaviors which are set up due to traumatic events which happened before the age of seven. Uh, and some of it will be due to the fact that people are just literally so out of touch with themselves and they're living in their head, they're living in their head brain and they're not listening to the feedback that is coming all the time automatically from the heart brain and the gut brain. Now, the reason this happens is because the heart and the gut, and what I call those two things together, I call them the body intelligence. People are just not in touch with their body. They're literally, they're cut off at the neck. They're living in their head, just thinking about everything, trying to work everything out in the head, trying to find solutions in the head. They are not listening to what is going on below the neck. And in order to get healthy and become self-masterful, we have to get in touch with all three brains. We have to recognize the communication from all three brains. So the first level of communication that our body sends us are what we call body sensations or felt sense sensations. So to give you an example, a very um, simple uh, example is if you need to go to the toilet, you get a certain sensation in your bladder uh, or your bowels, <laughs> that tell you, you, that this is a body talking, you need to take me to the toilet now, right? If you do that and you take the required action, what we call constructive action, <laughs> then um, that sensation goes away, right? It's the same thing with hunger. 
And the body is hungry. It says, I'm hungry. I'm going to send you a sensation of hunger. And what you need to do with that is do something about it by eating something or maybe putting some liquid into my body if I'm feeling thirsty, right? And the thirsty sensation will probably be more like in the mouth. So we have these automatic body, body sensations, which is our body's way of communicating to us because it doesn't speak words, right? That's not its language. Um, it speaks body sensations. And some of those body sensations we're very well trained in. So, you know, parents always saying, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you want something to drink? Do you need to go to the toilet? So we're quite well trained uh, without realizing it in recognizing those particular body sensations. But the body also sends other body sensations in response to what is going on in our environment, in our life, such as, for example, a gut feeling. And of course, the gut feeling is coming from the gut brain. So when we have a gut feeling that is actually communication telling us something and we need to listen to it, we need to interpret it, we need to act on it in order that that <clears throat> gut sensation is recognized and can can dissolve now most people are not doing that in in apart from you know the toilet and eating and whatever most people are not taking notice of these body sensations now because the body is programmed to make sure that we stay alive through eating through going to the toilet through um, looking after ourselves through following our life purpose through making sure that people don't treat us badly, through lots of different things. It is literally programmed like inbuilt software to do its job, and it will not stop doing its job, thank goodness. Uh, this can't be bypassed. So if our body is sending us a felt sense, felt sense sensation that we're not paying attention to and we're not acting upon, it will then start to up-level it to something louder. And that louder starts to go into stress and emotions. And they come quite close together. So when something isn't right for us, our body will start to send us stress. And, and I'm talking more here negative emotions here, right, when something isn't right. So, for example, say somebody is working in a job, and you may relate to this. Uh, I know that medical professionals and doctors work very long hours. Say someone is working, actually I'll give you an example, this is a real example of somebody I work with, working in a job for um, 14 hours a day and basically that was just too much for the body, right? The body is just not designed to work 14 hours a day as, as this person was, not taking breaks, not feeding her body properly, just working through really demanding a lot from the head. Um, and of course, our brain uses about 80% of our energy. We need to give it breaks and rests. And so she was really over asking from her body. And so her body, in response, automatically started to send stress, to go into the stress response, which is the survival response, it is the fight flight response. It is the response that the body, if you could interpret the words, it's saying, I'm in danger, red alert, red light on the dashboard in the car, right? That is what the stress response is designed for. But really, you know, in, 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 in theory, wouldn't it be lovely if, if that response was only coming on because say a bus was about to run us over or a car was hurtling towards us or in the past it would be a tiger running after us. Now the problem is in today's world is that because people are totally ignoring their body's needs, the stress response has just become the norm and people are living in the stress response. Now Harvard University say that at least 80% of illness is stress related. I personally would put it about 99% and one of the things I also discovered in my research and working with many, many clients is, and myself actually, it was is discovering it for myself first, is that stress is a habit and it is set up very, very early on in life. And for many people, it's because it wasn't safe in their, in, in their environment. So therefore, it wasn't safe to not be stressed, right? So it becomes an unconscious habit. So the body starts sending stress and emotion such as frustration, fear, sadness. These are all feedbacks about something that's going on in their life. 
And it could be something from the past that is being re-triggered in the present or it could be something in the present. But you see, most people are ignoring this level of communication and at their peril because if this goes on for long enough, eventually the body is going to start sending symptoms. So symptoms are a furtherance of the stress and emotions. There is usually always emotions and stress. I say usually because I never like to say 100%, but usually there's going to be stress and emotions underneath symptoms. And so we have to track back and work out, well, what are all the events that have created the stress and the emotions in order to fully reduce the symptoms? So I want to talk about the stress regeneration cycle, which is also another uh, another maybe new understanding for a lot of people on why symptoms are never a mistake. This stress regeneration cycle explains why symptoms are um, a part of an intelligent self-healing cycle. So I'm just going to give a really simple example and there are much, much more complex examples uh, and I'm really only touching the surface here of what this diagram really means. But what happens is we have something in our life which we call a stress trigger which triggers the body to go into this stress response. Now, if you're a medical professional or doctor listening, I know that you know much more about this than me, about the really the inner workings at a physiological level of the sympathetic and parasympathetic um, nervous system, et cetera, et cetera. But just to make it really simple, which, you know, as far as clients is concerned, is absolutely enough. Something happens in our life which is a stress trigger and often there can be more than one thing. Uh, so for example, say somebody um, finds out that their husband is cheating on them and that is a stress trigger. It causes a shock which is actually called a Udin moment which is an unexpected, dramatic, isolating, no strategy event which creates a shock and that shock trauma and the emotions that go with it are sort of frozen into the cells. And then they go through this phase of dealing with this situation, which can be traumatic, stressful, and their body is in the stress response, right? It's just surviving, dealing with the situation. And then a regeneration, at some point, a regeneration trigger occurs. And that could be, for example, maybe the situation comes to an end and the divorce papers are signed and, you know, there's this completion. And then at that point... There is what is called, that is what is called the regeneration trigger. And that triggers the body to go into the parasympathetic response or the self-healing response so that it can go into regeneration and healing. Now, obviously I'm only talking about what's happened emotionally so far. But what happens is when we're in the stress phase, often, not always by the way, um, there's lots of paradoxes in this, uh, in this model, um, but when the body is in the stress phase, very often people, because they're so stressed and they're so like, oh, 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 I'm just getting on with things, they don't feel any symptoms or, or they don't notice any symptoms. However, often when they, once they go into the regeneration phase, that's when the body goes into this healing phase and that's when symptoms can start to show up. So, for example, in this example, say this was, you know, a relatively healthy person, um, they're in the stress phase just dealing with the situation, then they go into the regeneration phase and they feel exhausted, feel absolutely shattered. Maybe they also get a cold or a virus and they think there's something wrong. Actually, it's all part of the, the healing cycle. And the, the symptoms which are showing up in this regeneration phase are just part of the body's way of balancing itself out. Because this diagram here, as you can see, it's the yin-yang diagram, which is Chinese, from Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine is all about we have to have balance and harmony. And we live in a universe of cause and effect. So everything has to balance itself out. So that's just a simple uh, example, it could be, for example, somebody was working really, really hard on a project, working 18 hours a day for six months, and then they, they, they do that, they're stressed all the time, but they're getting the job done, and they're just on, their adrenals are just like going crazy, uh, and they're just, you know, keeping going. And then the regeneration trigger is the project finishes, and they go on holiday, and then they get sick, 
right? So, you know, this is very common. Now, there's much more complex versions of this, uh, but I'm just introducing the concept here. And this is this diagram here shows the same thing um, that we have a traumatic a life event, which is a significant emotional experience, which puts us into this stress phase, uh, and then. Uh, once there's a conflict re re resolution, then we go into the regeneration phase. And actually, there's there's often two parts of the regeneration phase where there's a healing crisis in the middle. So, for example, if somebody has the flu, when they get that to that really sick place where the temperature goes really, really high and they just feel like they're dying and they're never going to get better, that actually can be part of the healing crisis. Uh, and that is why sometimes it's better to sort of write it out than, than put a whole load of, um, you know, meds into us because they can stop this healing cycle completing itself. But I know for myself that when I've had the flu, if I've ridden out this, this stage, um, then I come through it and, we can, and, 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 and it's, it's better than if I had taken medication. So this is this stress regeneration cycle. And what it shows is that symptoms are part of the natural healing cycle. And sometimes when we come in and try to stop the symptoms, we stop the natural healing cycle. So what we have to do, what we really have to do is to recognize, well, what, what are the emotional conflicts that have been going on that have created all this to happen in the first place? And if we address and heal those emotional conflicts, then that also helps the body heal itself better and maybe for some people at all because sometimes unless we address the and heal these emotional conflicts and this has been my experience working with clients they just don't get better so just to um, carry on uh, you know um, expand on this uh, from a point a, a point of view of embryology we have as you know three germ layers uh, embryologically ectoderm, metoderm, endoderm, which become different parts of the brain. They correlate to different parts of the brain. And what happens is when we have um, a trauma or a shock or an emotional, you know, uh, upsetting situation, that shock gets registered in the heart and then it gets registered also in a different part of the brain, which correlates with a different organ or organ tissue. Very, very fascinating. And so I just want to go through and share um, four main emotional conflict themes which relate to different uh, parts of the brain. So we have <clears throat> the brain stem, which is the oldest part of our brain, which is to do with survival, digestion, and reproduction. And that, that's the emotional theme. Uh, so I probably should talk about the organ tissues first. So we have the brain stem, which is connected with the digestive tract, the reproductive organs, and the senses. This is just a brief, this is not all the organs, it's just the main, some of the main ones. So physically, it, uh, the brain stem correlates with the digestive tract, the reproductive organs, and the senses. But the emotional conflict theme, because every cell, tissue, and organ has a metaphysical function, remember, has, doesn't just have a physical function, it has a metaphysical function. Um, the emotional conflict theme that will affect these organs will be issues around survival and being able to digest our life, uh, to digest our emotional life. So what I'm saying here is that if we have um, issues in our life around survival, they're going to hit the digestive tract because physically the digestive tract is about survival and metaphysically the digestive tract is about survival. Right? Can you see the correlation there? And in the stress phase of this healing cycle, there will be cell tissue growth in this phase in in, in when somebody's going through an issue that's to do with survival. So say for example, and back to the example of somebody um, find out that their husband uh, is having an affair and then they go into the fear of, well, how am I gonna survive if we, we're not together anymore, I, I don't have a job, I, I don't have a way of earning a living, I won't be able to survive. So that's an emotional survival fear which affects the digestive system. And the brain relay is the brain stem. So the next uh, part of the brain, which is affected um, 
different brain relays, the cerebellum. And if we look at the organs and tissues which correlate with the cerebellum according to embryology, it's the pleura, the peritoneum, mammary glands, the skin, the dermis. And these are all like the protective sacs or coverings of our body, right? So the skin is a protective covering, the pleura, the peritoneum, etc. They're there protecting the organs uh, and our body. And the emotional conflict theme um, uh, that relates to these organs is integrity, protection, and defilement. So in other words, if we feel attacked in some way, either physically or emotionally. So for example, if somebody is in an emotionally abusive or physically abusive relationship, then it's quite likely that these organs will start to show up some imbalance. Right? This is how it works. It's whatever the physical function is correlates to the metaphysical function. And again, there will be cell tissue growth in a stress phase. And if we come to the cerebral medulla, uh, the, the, it's mainly the skeletal system plus ovaries, testes, kidneys, and some other organs and organ tissues. And if you think about the skeleton, the skeleton is about, you know, we say, you know, that person doesn't have a backbone or, um, you know, stand straight, right? Our, the skeletal system is, is about strength. So if we don't feel strong inside, we have inferiority and low self-worth, then we may have problems turning up in these organs or organ tissues. And then the cerebral cortex is a lot of other organs and organ tissues, but it's all about social contact, uh, our territory, our environment. You know, do we feel safe at home? Do we feel safe in our environment? And you know, there'll be many other organs that are affected if we don't. So this is this correlation between what's happening physically and what's happening emotionally in the body. And as I gave the example before, we have the GI tract, which physically is about digesting food. So we swallow our food, it gets chunked up, uh, we chew it up, it gets chunked up, it gets... Um, you know, done, churned in the stomach, then the nutrition is taken out, the waste is excreted. Now that's what the, the, the digestive tract does physically, but metaphysically our digestive tract has to process our emotional life, literally from the mouth to the anus. And the example I gave earlier of the 74-year-old lady who um, had this terrible agonizing abdominal pain, she had stored this grief in her um, large intestine. And the large intestine in Chinese medicine is connected with the, the lungs and the emotion that correlates with the large intestine and the lungs is sadness and grief. So she had not been able to let go of that sadness and grief. It was literally stored at a cellular energetic level in that area of her body because that was the intelligence of, of her body to be able to store that emotion in the organ tissue that was, you know, has been designed to store it, if you like. And so once she got in touch with the emotional trauma, that energetic charge was able to be released. And this is an example, for example, of the cerebellum, and this is like a cross cut of, of the, that part of the brain. Uh, and how, and so for example, the pericardium is, we know it's to protect the heart physically, but metaphysically and emotionally, it's, it's protecting um, against um, attack, right? Against emotional attack. So there is always this physical function of an organ and a metaphysical function of an organ or organ tissue. <laughs> and this is what we have to understand that if we have traumas and stresses, stored inside of us they're going to be stored literally in a part of the body at a cellular organ tissue level and unless we clear that emotional trauma or deal with the emotional situation that's happening right now the, the, the this organ or organ tissue can't bring itself back to balance we've got to do the emotional work otherwise it's very difficult for the body to heal completely physically anything else will just be a plaster so for example if you know acupuncture is fantastic people get huge relief from acupuncture and sometimes when you work physically you can actually induce an emotional response and emotional healing however 
a lot of people, they may be going to have acupuncture, but they're still not dealing with the root cause at a psycho uh, stress emotional level, right? It's, it's still a sort of a plaster sometimes. And interestingly enough also, different, uh, these different layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, the endoderm, they also correlate with different microbes. So depending on what um, dermatological layer of the body is uh, affected, you know, according to this brain relay, uh, viruses will come into play or bacteria will come into play or fungi uh, will come into play. It's very, very interesting. So the reason I'm pointing this out is that when we have, for example, SIBO, <laughs> so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the body has not made a mistake, right? It's trying to balance itself out somehow. So the microbes are actually doing an incredible job. They might not be doing the job that we think we want them to do, but they're actually acting incredibly intelligently, and we keep thinking they're not. We keep thinking it's a mistake, but it's not a mistake. Uh, whatever those microbes are doing, they're doing it in response to what is happening totally holistically in our being. And so we've got to look at the emotional stuff. And I work a lot with people with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome and digestive issues. And it so relates to this survival theme, to not feeling safe, to fear issues, etc. We've got to deal with it at that level. So just to share, to finish, just a few case studies. So I had a lady come to me who had been experiencing chronic fatigue and depression for 55 years. And really it had got worse, um, well it got worse after her husband died, but also what had happened was she'd had a really horrendous birth and she, she it was a very, very traumatic, uh, sorry, giving birth, very, very traumatic when she was giving birth. She had no support at the time and it was just all glossed over and she got on with her life. But the emotional trauma had not been dealt with. And she was at the point when she contacted me where she said she could hardly lift her hand out of her bed to reach a glass of water. And she went through one of my online programs and we only had one consultation together and I was absolutely amazed because she, she, she was so determined. You know, she's 88 and she's, she's like, I'm not gonna give up, I wanna find an answer. And within six months of taking her through this self-help program, she basically healed herself and her symptoms were down to from, they were nine to 10 and they were down to, to zero to two uh, out of 10. She completely transformed her life and that was through this emotional clearing, through looking after herself, change, changing how she felt about herself, uh, just changing her mind, her emotions, her habits, her, her behaviors. So that was fantastic. And I've already explained the story of the lady with the stomach pains. And then there was another lady who was about 30 and she'd been diagnosed with chronic fatigue only for a short time. Most of the people I work with have been diagnosed for years. They've had it for years, but she'd only had it for three months. Um, and she'd been told the usual story, which is very, very sad and so untrue. There is no cause and there's no solution. Oh my goodness, that just that's just crazy because there are causes and there are solutions. So in the first session, she revealed something that she'd never revealed to anybody else. She'd kept a, a secret inside of her and there's a lovely saying, we're as sick as our secrets. And she had been sexually abused, she'd never told anyone. And because it was such a relief to get that off her chest, to let this emotional energy out, uh, within literally a week, she was better. Now that's quite an unusual turnaround. Most people I work with need at least three months, but some people can literally have transformational uh, reduction in symptoms in one to two weeks. I said I was gonna share my story, so I'll share that now because it's relevant to this. So I'd been searching for six years um, for the, the, the cause of the chronic fatigue, and I kept on thinking, well, I just don't have any energy. And I literally almost crawled to this appointment with this practitioner, um, just could hardly get out of bed that day, but I made it, I took a taxi, cost me 100 US dollars to get this taxi, and 
got to this this uh, appointment and had uh, a session and the thing that changed it all for me was when this practitioner said to me chronic fatigue is not a lack of energy it's blocked energy and specifically it's blocked emotional energy and nobody had ever told me that nobody had and all the by that stage, 140 therapies I had tried, nobody had told me, you're blocking your emotions, you're holding them all inside. And I had a huge emotional release and I, I was able to walk out of that clinic and take the train back to the hotel when I was virtually crawling on my way there. And that was within the space of an hour and a half. Now, you know, I do believe also there's a timing for getting well. And I tried so many things, and that was just the time to have what I call the turning point. So usually, and hopefully for most people, when I do my Kiwi Health, De Health Detective Breakthrough session, they get that turning point in that session, because usually people have been, like, like I had, tried hundreds of different things and not got an answer. So... Yeah, so that was the turning point for me, and that is the power of emotions to create extraordinary symptoms. And for some people, it will be fatigue. For some people, it will be pain. For some people, it will be cancer, right? And we're all different, and we'll all create our own symptoms according to all the personal, you know, the different personal things that we have going on for us. So the last case study, 30-year-old um, male doctor who had been ill for, well, actually it was longer than three years, but he'd been unable to work for three years, uh, had not, was, yeah, was basically didn't even have anywhere to live. I mean, it was dire. And he'd never realized that the abusive childhood that he had had, um, and he'd stored all this pain and hurt and anger and sadness and grief, all of this was stored inside of him. And so, you know, finally recognizing it, which we did in the first session, and then learning how to clear it and also how to deal with his emotions in his current life, basically reduced his symptoms. And within five months, he was able to go back to work. So that was a wonderful result. So just to add, coming to the end now, um, <clears throat> as I said before, much chronic illness is secretly set up by the age of seven. Ongoing stresses and trauma create serious illness. Childhood abuse, bullying and trauma are key factors. If we have life problems, they all go back to the same root cause. What I mean by that is if we're <clears throat> either ill or we're unhappy or our career isn't working or our finances aren't working or our relationships aren't working whatever it is that's what I call an end result and that is the result of all the energy that's stored inside of us the emotions the unconscious beliefs the unhealthy behaviors and habits we have which all lead to what we call an unwanted result so we have to track back and get back to these unconscious beliefs to identify the emotions that are still inside the body uh, when we clear that then our whole life changes. So we heal people, not illness. We heal a whole person's life, not a health condition. And that is why when people come to me, they may say I've been diagnosed with XYZ health condition and they'll have some fancy name for it. You know what? In my world, it really doesn't matter. It's a label. It's a label for a group of symptoms. Now it's useful, it's useful to have that label, but if we keep focusing on that label, we're, we're just not gonna be focusing on the solution. We're just focusing on the problem, on the end result, and that is never gonna get us to the solution and to the cause. So the symptoms are just the end result. We need to look for the cause. I have, uh, if you're wanting to know more information, I have a uh, free program which is called What Healthcare Model is Right for Me? And it talks about this, this disruption of healthcare and how there are many different levels of healthcare according to our awareness, our consciousness, our conditioning. And a lot of people are not aware of all the options that exist. And I certainly didn't. So <clears throat> that's what this illness, um, uh, sorry, what this program goes into, talks about, and 
go to the next page. Uh, and it, it talks about the influence of our culture, our conditioning, uh, our consciousness on what healthcare options we see are available, uh, what, what, what we will even choose. And then uh, I'm in the process of creating right now a new series called What Causes Illness? And what I get, do in this series, are I look at, I separate it up into what are the physical causes, emotional, environmental, mind, spiritual, energetic causes of illness and of course they all go together but most people in our society today are only really looking at the physical causes um, they're not really looking so much at the other levels so we've got to look at everything to understand what really causes illness so it's a very comprehensive program so if you want to uh, learn more about that I'll give the the, the website in a minute um, so I'm interested if you're a medical professional and you want to learn more about this emotional causation of illness and use it in your your um, your work then um, I'm interested in teaching the Kiwi Health Detective root cause protocol if you're interested send me an email to to this email address and I have to say that in 12 years, uh, and this is not saying this to brag, it's just that this is how it's happened, that so far, 100% success rate uh, in, in, every, in every case take. And what I mean by that is that we've always identified the emotional cause of the symptoms. So that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm always open to that I might not be able to. There's, you know, I'm always waiting for the time where I won't be able to do that. But so far, that's... How it's been and also if you're interested in learning root cause analysis I do recommend lifestyle prescriptions and what you can do is go to my website kimnighthealth.com drop down in the event section and you'll find lifestyle prescriptions training <clears throat> and and there, there's there's um, a two-day introductory training and a one-year professional training which um, I'm currently training in myself and uh, will be delivering um, workshops to health professionals and the public on, on this system as well. So if you have any other questions, um, you can go to, uh, you can email me, you can go to YouTube and Facebook um, for updates, uh, I have online programs and uh, you can reach me from my website which is kimnighthealth.com uh, and I hope that this has been useful and um, please do contact me if you're interested in me running a workshop or a training because I love sharing this information as you might have guessed so I'm just going to check the chat one last time <clears throat> um, thank you I completely agree that very frequently illness is driven by underlying emotions I'm curious what your approach is to treating the emotions <laughs> so the thing with treating, thanks for the question, the thing with treating the emotions is that, as I said, I've trained in multiple methods which deal with how to identify the emotional cause. And because I've used them for so long and trained in so many methods, out of that it's like it all went into a mixing bowl, it all got mixed up, and out of it came the night method of transformation. And so what I do now is very intuitive uh, and I can't really explain it on a webinar like this because it will be whatever that person needs and because every person is different and unique, they're all going to need a slightly different approach. So I will be putting that together at some point in, in a training, um, but at the moment, you know, have not yet done that. But basically, I help people to identify I, I in you know to identify all the emotional causes and in the Kiwi Health Detective Protocol training um, I, I am ready to train that and to teach that and that is all about isolating these root causes it's not about resolving them that comes later um, but the first step is always isolating the problem so the what I always say that if your car breaks down and I don't know if, about you, but I don't know anything about cars and I'm not particularly interested to. But if a car breaks down and we take it to a mechanic, if they can't identify what's wrong, they have no hope in fixing it, no hope at all. 
they must identify, is it the radiator, is it the electrics, um, is it the exhaust, is it the whatever, gearbox, whatever. They have to identify what's gone wrong so that they know which parts to order and which tools to use, right? So that's what I do in this first Kiwi Health Detective Breakthrough session. We identify exactly what's gone wrong, if you like, and what needs to be fixed. And then that will be on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, if I'm working with private clients, then it's going to be totally uniquely tailored to them. Now, if I'm working with group coaching, what I found is that there were certain things that every client, even though they're all different, there are certain things that every client needs to do and needs to change. Um, so, for example, stress reduction, <laughs> um, changing, you know, their, their work-life balance, perhaps, their time management, um, how they communicate um, with other people about how they're feeling. There are certain things that we all have to learn. And so I'm constantly teaching the same things to different clients, exactly the same things. And so that is why that can be taught in a group uh, format. Um, but to to actually go into details of my approach it's my own approach and i can't really describe it here so sorry if i can't answer that question fully but if you sign up for the what causes illness program i go into much more causes than what i've talked about on this program uh, i talk about genetics epigenetics hereditary uh, karma spiritual causes geopathic stress environmental toxins it's much more in depth. Um, this webinar has been mainly about the emotional, but I haven't even gone into in depth into about all the different types of emotional uh, causes. I've just been sort of very surface level, you know, just saying emotions. So that what causes illness series is um, much more in depth, much more thorough, but it's all about the different causes of illness. So I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope this has been useful. And please do contact me, as I said, if you're interested in further training. Thank you.